My dad, when I took this job, I'll call it a job, when I accepted the offer, I spent some time talking to my parents, and I was talking about the challenges of going to a group where there were so many people that I knew were established Bible students, that were established people who had preached and had taught and had a, an understanding that in, in a lot of cases was probably deeper than my own. And he said, and he said this on more than one occasion during that conversation, he said, do not forget to teach the basics. No matter how advanced the audience is, no matter how much they know, don't neglect the simple fundamental truths of the gospel. And I think that's probably, you know, those of you who have preached longer than I have can probably attest to the idea that that's sometimes a challenge for an evangelist because when we get up here, we want to be, um, we want to be engaging. We want to make sure that everybody's locked in. And it's hard to get people to lock in on that story they've heard over and over and over again. We can do, we're going to do a lesson on the Sermon on the Mount, and everybody immediately goes, okay, I can recite this too. Uh, and that can be a challenging thing. Um, but it goes back to something that Stephen, I think, said during the meeting, the idea that when we have that childlike desire for the Word of God, when we hear the same thing over and over again, but we hear it because we want to hear it. Uh, we enjoy hearing those stories. And Lord willing, that's going to happen again today, because uh, we are going to be very basic today. And maybe we'll take a slightly different approach to it, but we are going to talk about the idea of the gospel. Just in its, in its very basic sense, what is the gospel and what does it mean for us? And I think this is an important thing, and, and it's easy for us to overlook this, this topic sometimes because we just assume that everybody knows what the gospel is. And if you go out and ask people today, what is the gospel? Well, they'll be able to tell you. But we're living in an age where more and more, I think, the definitions of terms in the religious world are becoming more and more removed from what we read in the scripture to the point where we can't really safely assume that these people are going to know what this is. And even if they do, their idea of it may be very different than what we see in the Bible. You know, someone might look at, well, what is the gospel? And they say, well, the gospel is one of those four books. And so the gospel is something you read. It's like literature. Um, you read it, and now you know the story of what happened. Well, other people will say, well, the gospel, what the gospel is, is the proclamation of what Jesus did, that Jesus came, he died, he rose from the dead, and in fact, you'll hear a lot of times that people will say that the, really the first gospel sermon was taught by the women at the, at the tomb who came back and told the apostles, the Lord is risen. That was the gospel. And, and there's a sense in where a lot of that's true, but it misses some of the finer points and some of the specifics. So um, I want to just real briefly talk about what this word means, and now there's an old running, I don't know if it's a joke or an old thing in, in public speaking, that any time you start a lesson with the phrase, Webster's defines this term as insert, you're in for a long day. But we're not gonna, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to quote Webster, but it is important to think about what this word means. The word literally had meant, originated from an Anglo-Saxon word that said that was God's spell, and eventually, like a lot of those terms, where they, they kind of got blurred together. And what you're going to see in the Bible is that when you look at different places, that word is never really defined, and the reason is because it's, a, it's kind of like the word church, the word ecclesia. It, it, it isn't given a specific definition. It is a general term that is used for a specific purpose within Scripture. And you may see in different times it's going to mean different things. For example, when Jesus comes in Matthew 4, what is he doing? He's preaching the gospel, <clears throat> excuse me, the gospel of the kingdom. Well, his gospel is going to be a little bit different than what we're going to read later on, isn't it? God, you know, Jesus, although he alludes to things that are going to happen, Jesus' gospel is very simple. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in Luke 9, when he sends the apostles out, it's the same exact message. Go preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. Now, when Peter and Paul are going to use this, and mostly Paul, Paul almost is really, other than a couple of pastors, Paul almost exclusively is the one who uses the term gospel. He seems to have a particular affinity for it. Uh, he's going to use it in a different way in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. We're, we're not going to go back and read that, but we're all familiar with what he says. I delivered to you that which was first importance, that Jesus Christ was, uh, was 
was, bar- was, was killed, was buried, was raised from the dead, and was seen by these witnesses, and he goes through and accounts all of them. That is the gospel story as Paul accounts for it. Now, the word itself, you're not going to see God's spell in, in vines or strongs when you go look at it. That word, I don't know if, it's, if the U is pronounced as a V or not, but if it looks familiar, there's a reason for that, because this is the word where we get the term evangelism, or evangelist, or evangelize. This idea of telling the good news, and originally it was this idea of a reward for good tidings, but at some point that kind of got dropped, and and the word really refers more to the good tidings themselves. And it can refer to both the message itself, the gospel, the good news, or it can refer to the delivery of that message, the idea of evangelizing. You know, that's when, when you see for the most part, with some exceptions, when that word comes up, the idea of preaching, that's this idea of evangelizing. That's, it's rarely translated that, but it's the same word. Uh, and we see that over in Acts 11, 20, the, the, when the church in Antioch started. Some, uh, men who came to Antioch and were preaching, were evangelizing to people around the area, outside of the Jewish community. The idea that the gospel was being spread. Now, before I, without getting too technical now, you start to see two different ways in which this where it's going to be used. Now, and Vines talks about this specifically. He says, first of all, you've got the specific accounts. That's what we've been talking about earlier. These are the specific ideas of the facts of history, if you, if you believe the gospel to be true, that Jesus came, he died, he rose from the dead. He did all these things for the great sacrifice on our behalf. But it is also used in the interpretation of those facts. The idea that these happened, but what does that mean? You know, what, 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 what is the application for that? Uh, you know, I, um, I was driving down the road to pick somebody up one time, uh, and I, it's, it was, I was going to New York City, and, and because it's a lengthy road, um, it's about a 45-minute drive, I, I'll oftentimes listen to a sermon or something on the way in, and, and that, depending on who I'm listening to, that works out just about right. And so I, I picked this, this girl up, and we were driving, and we were chatting about something, and I had this still on in the background, and... Eventually, we got to a little the conversation, and he kept going, and I was kind of listening, and she was kind of listening. And at some point, she heard something, and he looked over at me, and she says, well, that's, so that's where you got that. It's like, what, where I got what? Well, he just said, obey the gospel. You always say, obey the gospel. I always wondered where you got that. And I, in, my, in my most patient tone, <laughs> I tried anyway. I said, well, I didn't get that from him. I got that from the Bible. You know, and what are you talking about? You, that's not in the Bible. Well, sure it is. Um, we are to obey the gospel. Well, how can that be? Well, and of course, I took her to the passage. I, there's a couple of them, obviously. 1 Peter 4.11 is one of them. 4.17 is one of them. And, and, and she looked at it and, said, I, and she said, I, I don't ever remember seeing that. Said, well, that's interesting because it's just kind of right there in red. You know, it's just, you, it might as well be waving, waving a big red flag. Obey the gospel. And I think what happens is, because I don't, she's a, she knew the Bible, she had read the Bible, but what happens a lot of times is when we have an assumption about what a word means, it is very easy for us to ignore things that will tell us something different because we're not looking for it. And anybody who has lost their wallet and has looked for the entire house, I just did this with my phone just yesterday. I'm going to have to put a thing on the back of it so I can notify it and find out where it is. You look all over the entire house, and you walk out, and there it is sitting on the counter right in front of you in plain sight because you weren't looking there. You didn't expect to see it, and your mind just kind of took a shortcut and didn't bother to notice it. Well, we can be, if we're not careful, we can do that with the Bible too. We're reading along, and we just make this assumption that the gospel means what it means, and, and if the gospel is just an account of, sto- of a story, well, there's nothing to obey there. You know, it's just an account of what happened. So I just kind of, my mind just kind of fills in the blanks, and I just kind of go over that, and I don't ever really notice the fact that, in fact, the gospel is something that is delivered for me to respond to and to obey. And so it's important for us to understand that the word is used in different ways. And while it is not defined specifically, I think what you can do when you look at the way it is used is you can see some things and make some inferences and make some judgments that there are, I'm going to say seven. If you, you, You may think of two or three other ones afterwards, and maybe I'll amend it next time and say the eight things that the gospel demands. But we're going to talk about seven things 
that the gospel demands. When we look at the Bible and we look at how this word is used, uh, there's some things that just, if, if we're talking about preaching the gospel, and I know that there's not anybody here, the, the, one of the good things about having a small group is I can tell pretty much who out there needs to obey the gospel, and I don't really see anybody here now unless somebody's got something they want to share with me after, after worship. But we're all going to talk to somebody who has not. And we need to understand that when we're talking about the gospel with other people, there are some things that have to be present in that discussion. 